According to the Center for Health Statistics at the Centers for Disease Control, over 72,000 Americans died from drug overdoses in 2017, up from roughly 63,000 in 2016. And experts believe that as many as 650,000 people will die over the next 10 years. STAT, a health and medicine journalism company, once again rocked the world of addiction and recovery with their forecast. Their report on the future of opioid-related overdoses estimated the U.S. could exceed 93,000 by 2027 if we maintain the rate of growth we've been seeing the last several years. While this forecast may seem bleak, state and federal agencies are fighting back. In this video, we'll learn about the financial and societal costs of the epidemic, and we'll outline the strategies used for a balanced approach to addressing the problem. The societal impact of the crisis is staggering and goes much further than the, simply the cost of overdose treatment. It also includes rising numbers in the criminal justice system, treating babies born dependent on opioids, greater transmission of infectious diseases, increasing number of injuries associated with intoxication, for example, drug driving, and lost productivity in the workplace. In 2016, the U.S. Surgeon General released a landmark report entitled Facing Addiction in America, outlining the need for a multi-pronged approach that included prevention, treatment, and recovery. In 2018, Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf signed an unprecedented statewide disaster declaration to provide supports for a similar approach. So what is this balanced approach? It relies on four main strategies supply reduction, treatment and harm reduction, recovery, and primary prevention. The first that we will explore is supply reduction. Now, the first thing that comes to your mind may be investigating and prosecuting drug and alcohol related offenses in criminal cases. But supply reduction also includes enhanced regulatory enforcement, such as a prescription drug monitoring program, also known as PDMP. The Joint Commission, which is an independent, not-for-profit organization that accredits and certifies nearly 21,000 healthcare organizations in the U.S., created a standard in 2001 that required all accredited organizations to assess pain in all patients. In response to the opioid crisis, they updated the standard to include a variety of additional requirements that use strategies to decrease opioid use and minimize risk associated with opioid use, including providing at least one non-pharmacological pain treatment option for patients, facilitating access to prescription drug monitoring programs, addressing patient education and engagement, including storage and disposal of opioids to prevent these medications from being stolen or misused by others, and facilitating referral of patients addicted to opioids to treatment programs. The PDMP is a statewide program that monitors the prescription of controlled substances. It is meant to be a tool not just to identify problematic prescribers, but also to support clinical decision making for prescribers to prevent potential misuse or addiction and, uh, and to identify issues for patient referral. After implementing a PDMP, Florida saw a decrease in prescribed opioids in 80% of their counties and a 50% decrease in oxycodone overdose deaths. And thanks to their PDMP, New York State saw a 75% decline in doctor shopping, where patients seek out the same drug from various doctors. Prescribers in Pennsylvania began to be required to use the newly expanded PDMP in 2017, and the state has seen a reduction of over 200,000 opioid dispensations from July 2016 to June 2017. Treatment and harm reduction approaches are another part of the balanced approach. Ses successful strategies here include increasing access to evidence-based treatment programs, ensuring that clients receive the appropriate duration of treatment, and providing a client-focused 
focused system that is easy to navigate for those with substance use disorder, which is a chronic disease similar to diabetes, diabetes, asthma, and heart disease that requires an individualized approach to treatment over the course of time. Working hand in hand with treatment is harm reduction. These are efforts that help mitigate some of the negative outcomes of drug abuse. Examples of harm reduction include such strategies as implementing policies to administer naloxone or Narcan, a synthetic overdose reversal drug similar to morphine that blocks opioid receptors in the nervous system, and ena enacting Good Samaritan laws, which provide legal immunity for substance users who contact authorities for help. The third item on our balanced approach checklist is recovery. Recovery is a process of change through which individuals improve their health and wellness, live self-directed lives, and strive to reach their full potential. Recovery is possible with appropriate treatment and supports including helping those in recovery make healthy choices, ensuring they have a stable place to live, helping them take on meaningful, purposeful activities, and building supportive relationships in the community. The final element in our balanced approach is one of the most important, but sadly, it's often overlooked and underfunded. We're talking about primary prevention, addressing the issue before it starts. The most effective primary prevention strategies are grounded in sound prevention science and include Prevention education that builds skills and resiliency. These are often delivered in a school setting. Community-based strategic planning. And environmental strategies such as product pricing and placement activities. Thankfully, Pennsylvania continues to lead the nation in its response to the opioid epidemic using many different approaches. We may not solve the opioid crisis quickly, but through a balanced approach that stresses enforcement, treatment and redu harm reduction, recovery, and primary prevention, there is hope for the future.